Reading from verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which ye have received of us. Now, if somebody quotes that verse and just stops there, oftentimes I've seen this verse used to say, well, if you're not doing things the way I'm doing it, then I'm going to kick you out of the church. That's not what this is saying. It's not saying that, you know, if you walk disorderly and you're not following the traditions of man, it's talking about, it says here, not after the tradition which ye have received of us. And in the context of this passage, first of all, it's the traditions received from the apostles who are preaching the word of God. So it's not just traditions that are man made, therefore you get kicked out of the church. So we shouldn't be kicking people out of the church just because they don't do things according to our preferences. Um, or they have different opinions on things that are disputable. Um, so we, we can't just take this verse and then just run with it. We have to read the whole passage to see what this walk, walketh disorderly is actually talking about. So you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which ye have received of us. And what is that? For, ye se ye, for yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. So Paul is saying here that it's the example that I've set because we didn't behave ourselves disorderly among you. And he continues, Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labour and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Now it's interesting to note there in verse 9, he says here, Not because we have not power. What? that we have not power to take wages of the church. Because a lot of people will say, well, Paul didn't take, you know, take money from churches and he didn't get paid. But they're wrong because he did, because he did take wages from certain churches. He took wages from the Philippian church, he took wages from the Thessalonian church. Um, and even here he says, not because we have not power, showing that he does have the authority to take wages. It's just that he didn't take it sometimes from the Thessalonian church to just show them an example of how to work hard. Um, he also said to the Corinthian church that he didn't take wages of them. But that's because they were falsely accusing him and he didn't want to add to that false accusation of taking money from them. So he took money. He says he robbed other churches to do the Corinthian church's uh, uh, service. Anyway, I'm not going into that in, the, in this sermon. But he says here, not because we have not power, so not power, authority to take money, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. So this walking disorderly, what is it? It is being lazy, not working at all, uh, but still coming along and being, uh, you know, being part of the fellowship, being part of the food, but not doing any labor, not working, first of all, in the church, maybe not doing any sewing, not, not working to even make any money. Uh, just somebody that's lazy and not doing anything. Uh, not because we have, uh, for even when we were with you, this we command you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So we see there that, you know, if somebody is being lazy and not working at all, and it doesn't mean that if you don't have a job, because you may not have a job, but, you know, you know when you come along to the house of God, you know, obviously, I, I expect you to get involved. I expect you to, you know, help out with the cleaning or help out with the setting up, with the cooking. Um, and to get involved with the soul winning, obviously there's an expectation there for you to do it. Um, but if somebody is not doing anything and yet they keep coming along and they're lazy, you know, the Bible says that we ought to chasten that person and have no company with them so that they will get to work. And verse 15, it says here, yet count him not as an enemy. So we're not, we're not trying to make them an enemy or make it an us versus them, but we're doing it to ad admonish him as a brother, the Bible says there to correct him and to get him working and to have uh, some accountability there. 